Hello, Irish fans, and welcome to another edition of Dome and Domer. My name is Mike Brammer. Joining me tonight, as always, Ed Jordanik. Also joining us from ndnation.com, Mike Coffee. All right, Ed, one of the advantages of being the oldest podcast on the planet is you and I have actually already done a podcast when Notre Dame started out 0-2. So that was Brian <laughs> Kelly's second year. And the next year, they ended up going 12-0 and and played in the CFP. So what makes you think that this year is any different? Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Well, it's, it looks like if they do it, it'll have to be with some uh, some magical defensive stops and some help from referees <laughs> because, like they did in 2012. Um, you know, it's amazing how things can just change in seven days or, you know, a few days, right? Well, I, mean, I think the trend, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make excuses. I just want to make this one point, and sure. this will this will be the last excuse I make, but 24 transfers, a five-star running back, two five-year seniors on the corners for them. I mean, it wasn't like Marshall didn't have anybody. I mean, there were some serious players on that team. And, and again, we'll find out at the end of the season, like, hey, how well do they play the rest of the way? We'll find that out. But, I just, you know, it's interesting because I don't think Notre Dame was the only, obviously, Texas A&M. But the transfer game has really shaken things up in college football, no doubt about it. Yeah, I, but I think you also have to say a couple things about Marshall in that respect. They did their homework on these guys. They yeah, brought they good players. They didn't bring in just you know transfers. They yep. coached them up in a very short period of time. They had a superior game plan. They had superior sort of an, they were in a superior emotional state in terms of being ready to play. Um, and you know they they whipped us up front. And my understanding is is they have a fourteen hundred yard rusher that didn't play. And their offensive line was kind of a you know a reboot. You know no, nowhere near the amount of minutes returning. Um, that we had with ours. So, yeah, you're right. Transfers transfers change things, but you still have to take those guys and get them prepared um, and turn them into a cohesive unit. Um, and they did that much, much better than our staff did. Um, and the results yeah. showed the field. I mean, it wasn't just that we lost the game. To tell you the truth, it bummed me out the most. It was how we lost. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it was it was not a good watch. <laughs> Papa, you you you've not done a show where we've been on too. So how do you feel now that you're you're at your first? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, but uh, by the way, coffee, you might have started something because I did notice on a lot of other podcasts, guys are now drinking. I mean, you can't see my cup now, but uh, <laughs> I uh, see like you're on blue and gold. A lot of drinking. Yeah, see like on blue and gold. Illustrated was drinking, and I'm like, all right, wait, they, these guys must have seen coffee on the last show and thought this oh, is okay. Oh God. I'm, you know, I, I echo what Ed said. I mean, yeah, they're probably more talented than they were given credit for. But by the same token, they they coached up a lot of guys and really put it to us. I mean, this, and frankly, this is what happens from a coaching staff perspective when you don't skip steps on the ladder on the way up. I mean, I... I I have a lot of respect for Tommy Reese as a fellow alumnus and stuff like that, but the fact of the matter is he's way too young, and frankly, he's in over his head. He is getting well, taken to school by much more experienced defensive coordinators, and I think it's because he jumped right into the offensive coordinator position without paying his dues and cutting his teeth on the way up like so many other coaches have done. I mean, the, the, when, they, when they showed the offensive coordinator for – for uh, for Marshall, yeah, he was a younger guy, but he 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 paid his dues. He'd done some stuff. He he knew exactly what his players could do, and he did it. Yeah. The, well, I think that there's the pictures of Tommy just like holding his head and all that. I mean, he's he looks overwhelmed, and quite yeah. frankly, I'm not surprised. So let's take a peek, take a peek of this and see what you guys think. Um, I put together a couple of plays, and it wasn't hard for me to put any together. By the way, I just went to the highlight reel. And on all the highlight reels, you can see some problems. But um, this is obviously that first pick. But I, I think that it, it, you can't blame this. There, there's several things going wrong on this play. I just wanted to point this out. So obviously, you get your pre-read. And he's seeing that they're going to this call. Now, whether this was called in, do you guys think that Tommy Reese is calling in the pre-reads as well as the post-reads? Because... I noticed that Buckner was looking over to the – he'd hold his hands up and then look over at the sidelines, and that got us in trouble a couple times with 
the play clock running out um, where, where it got a little too close. And I, you know, it's, it's a huge problem just in, I think they're dealing with a, a lot behind here, but just on this play, let's take a peek at this. So you've got this read now, Lindsay, a normal route is not to run straight and hitch. You got to run into the DB and hitch back to the quarterback because you got to create that separation between it's almost like you're playing, you're, you're creating an obstruction so that he doesn't have a clear path. But that's not what he did. See that? He went straight up and then turned back, giving this guy that angle. Now, to your point, Coffee, look at the DB and look at how he's looking. He's not even looking at Lindsay. He's looking at Buckner. And he sees that Buckner starts to set his feet. And he breaks at that point. He's not even looking at Lindsay. And at that point is when he sees the feet break and he breaks and he's got a clear path to the ball. And and so you could almost blame that on Lindsay as much as Buckner. I mean, it's Probably, but Lindsay's like completely locked on to the receiver almost from the snap. And if if his eyes are right there, he doesn't look at, and then he sets his feet and goes. I, I'm not surprised he broke on the route. Now, uh, a pump fake like an yeah. hitch and go. Might have left the guy flat footed and Lindsay would have oh, been we, we, over. But, our offensive but, line has not been given any time for I was allowing say, for pump. I mean, What I'm watching on this play is the fact that this is a really quick route. And, and look at Blake Fisher. Look right. where he makes his first point of contact. Yeah, look at that. I mean, there's, look at that. Look how deep he is to make his first point of contact. He's in the, he doesn't give any free. I mean, look at Bucker's almost got to throw off his back foot over them. <laughs> right yeah. over them. Right over the first top point of contact is like five yards deep. That's like crazy. Yeah, it was. But yeah, and I so I mean, th there's just a bunch of things you can point to uh, on this. This one's a tough one. This is this one is a real tough one to watch because this is the second pick. But but look at on his pre-read situation. He's got three guys to the right. Nobody over these two guys, but they're seven yards off. And so, obviously, your best chance at a completion is to the right. It's not to the left. It's to the right. And so then the question you ask yourself was, was this called in to go to the left no matter what? Or did Buckner just not make his read? Because if he does, if the ball snapped, his first read is this guy here. Does he take a step forward or a step back? He's backpedaling. So guess who's going to be wide open? <laughs> Only the best guy on our team. And you're going to throw to a one-on-one -on -one situation where he's on you. Did, did he's, he locked on the, on the, he's locked in on the he's locked in on the line of scratch. I, I don't even I don't even see if he even looked right. He's again, he didn't. he's looking left from the get-go. Yeah, it looks like he's immediately he looks to the safety here, not to here. Now the reason this happens is is because Buckner is not he's playing too fast. He just doesn't slow it down. He doesn't see he, he when you slow the game down, it becomes so much easier on you because yeah, but, you wait a you, second, but that that also comes from three and a half quarters of getting of having people in your face on every yes. on back. Yep. Yep, exactly. No, I'm not I'm not disputing that. But I as you can see I think it's kind of I think it's kind of funny. I mean, not funny. Uh, sad that on this play, an important play for pretty much the first time all season, when Buckner was sped up, he didn't just throw it in Mayer's general direction. Because yeah, yep. basically that's what he did last week and this week, right? Is is that yep. you know that's his he knows that's his his safety his best you know his, his best, best out player. his best right. out is a Mayer throw. Yeah, that's right. right. And so then that goes. Uh, but but if you watch it from this. Now watch it from here. And and again, I think this is whether this I, is I don't know in, why Jaden Thomas is playing. I guess it's just by default because we don't have anybody else. But I it, it I, must I, be I, so, yeah, it just must be the rotation, is what I'm, I'm guessing here. Is it I'm just happened to be a rotation? It's a rotation. But if, but if you watch what he does, your your whole mantra is to push off on this guy and get the inside route back to the quarterback. And that's not what he does. 
He, I mean, there's a lot of hand fighting. Don't get me wrong. But do you see how he pushes? Now, I don't know if the guy, see how he he opens himself up and allows this guy to slide in underneath. And he's like almost twice this guy's size. Ugh. I mean, he's got the he's got the physical attributes and he allows that guy to come in underneath him. That ball was thrown pretty far on the outside shoulder. I mean, that was not that bad. Yeah. He's it was supposed, just the wrong read. Isn't, isn't he supposed to be taught or isn't he taught to sort of basically pivot just like he's boxing out somebody underneath the basket? Yes, yes. And that so left see, leg is over right, here. Right, that left leg has to swing around yes. so that the guy's got to go through him to get to the ball. Yep, exactly. And yeah. and that's not what he does. And so, and not only that, he allows himself to get pushed off a bit there. You can see him backpedal a bit off that push. See that push? He's pushed back. Yeah. And I mean, that, that's the kind of, that's execution. I mean, that's just plain, no doubt about it, execution that just was not happening. And, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I wonder if, you know, I mean, look, Tommy Reese, yeah, you can, you can go there and say all that. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at the whole body of work at the end of the season. But I think, you know, this is the, also the problem when you've got a head coach who's overseeing all of this and he's never been in this situation before. So right now, one of the most difficult things for uh, for for him to now address is, OK, where can we make the biggest gains? What should I focus on right now that's going to have the best impact for our football team as we sit here 0 and 2? And a lot of the good coaches go back to fundamentals and they say, you know what, guys, you're not doing the fundamentals right. So our practice plan is going to now change. 70% fundamentals, 30% play calling and strategy. Because until you can prove you can get the fundamentals down, that's what we got to do. So I, it's going to be interesting to see that. I don't know. I, uh, you know, this is another example. This is more of a nitpick by me, but I don't know. It, it's it's kind of the same thing. This is on the touchdown. We're in right position all the way across. We got man here. He's Roman. And then here is where it gets interesting because he's taking a short flat. But when the play breaks down, you see him going the short flat. So he, he, we got three guys with one guy here and one crossing. And then what ends up happening is, is both these guys go to the quarterback 10 yards out, which creates that, that back, that void right here. And that's just an easy pitch and catch. Now, I don't know how much level of detail they get into when they're in this particular play call and, and what, whose responsibility is what. Does he stay home or does he go? You know, do they get to that level of, of detail of, all right, whose responsibility is to rush the quarterback if he breaks containment? I mean, it's got to be one of them, right? Um, but, I mean, it just, again, this is a bit of a nitpick. I, I don't, I don't know the we want to go too far there. But anyways, I mean, I had several of these put up and I got more and it, it's just frustrating to see all this. Um, on the good news front, as you said, Mayor is about the one guy you could definitely go to who's going to wheel it in, even in tight coverage. I mean, that, that was a heck of a play on his part. And you really see it from the back view. I mean, that guy's all over him. And, you know, that's just a no wonder he goes to him half the time when he needs to. But I don't know, Coffee. I mean, do you, do you really think that the play calling, I mean, is it, and, and what you just saw there, is it really the play calling or is it the execution of it? I mean, well, or is it both? No matter which it is, in, in the case of Tyler Buckner, Tommy Reese is also the quarterback coach. And he's been the quarterback coach longer than he's been the offensive coordinator. I think what, what we're seeing here is a result of 12 years of an inability to properly evaluate, recruit, or develop anyone at the quarterback position. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of the last Notre Dame quarterback who graduated, who, who was at the end of his senior season or his final season, was executing at a higher level than when he started. Oh, Kaiser. I, Probably, yeah, he's probably. Yeah, probably Kaiser's only one. But, but, or, or another way to frame it is how many three star quarterbacks came in and started for Notre Dame and bailed Kelly out? Yeah, that's awesome. I, I mean, obviously, Ian Book is one of them, right? Yeah. Um, Tommy Reese effectively was because Dane but didn't. I mean, I'm in a very similar situation in the, in the South Florida game. You know, we end up losing that game almost the same kind of feel as this mm -hmm. game, at least for me. 
Yeah, um, it's the. I mean, I mean you, we're pointing out these deficiencies, and I think Ed made a good point. When, when the game slows down, these kind of things become easier for everyone, not only a quarterback, because it just allows you can see it at speed. You can you can make those correct reads, and you can identify the guy who's going to be open and get the ball where it needs to be. What concerns me is that Tyler Buckner has been with this program for like two and a half seasons now. I mean, it, it, this this kid isn't a a, a, a a true freshman coming in trying to do things. It's I mean, he, yeah. he has some experience, and I'm hoping that this was just something where it's like the pressure was getting to him or something. I mean, if he if he's capable of doing these things, of course, now with this shoulder injury, I mean, there may be. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if we're ever going to well, see the listen, same quarterback again, but you here's, know, here's, the, here's the problem, though. I mean, this team was always going to, you know, I mean, quarterback, receiver were not going to be the strengths of this team. We knew that. We knew that. Right. Going in. right. What, what bothers me is, is that this game is a is a W if uh, the front seven on defense and the offensive line play up to the expectations that we saddled them with before this season started right so i you know yes buckner work in progress you know mistakes etc not good but also not not completely unexpected but you know when you literally you know for the second week in the row um you know can't you know convert a fourth and two <laughs> with your running game can't um you know protect the quarterback to a even a sort of a a degree that is is you know I mean I, that is that is really what's you know disturbing to me is is that you give up a 95 yard drive for the second week in a row um, you know you just get whipped physically at the point of attack on both sides of the ball too many times because um, I think that that game you know uh, that game is a W an ugly W but a W um, if you block and tackle better. Um, we complicate football like I kind of texted to you guys, you know, the other night. Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to win way more than you lose if you block and tackle well. And we did both really poorly on Saturday. Um, and that's got to change first. I mean, I don't know how Drew Pine's going to play. I don't know if Braden Lindsay or Lorenzo Styles or Tobias Merriweather or anything are, are going to improve as the, as the year goes on. And, you know, they'll probably cost us a couple more football games if they don't. But I know for sure that we're going to go six and six or five and seven or seven and five if um, if we don't uh, um, if we don't block and tackle better. Yeah, here's one of those. I mean, back to the point of Buckner. I mean, this this was a tough pill to swallow because if you look at the separation he had on this. If you see how much room he's got to hang, this is not a ball you try and zip in. This is a ball you put some air underneath it. He puts any kind of air underneath it out in here, and it's actually a touchdown. Forget about a completion. But when you're, when you're, that's what I mean. When the game's too fast, you're kind of in hurry up mode, and you're like, oh, I got to zip it in there. And and if instead, when you're kind of allowing things to absorb, and you're and you're taking it in. At the right speed, you see this and you know that you've got, if he lofts it up, even if he underthrows it a little, they can't make up the room. And so you're going to get that completion at, at a minimum, a completion and a tackle. But by trying to zip it in, you're trying to thread a needle where it doesn't need to be thread. And, and you know, that, that's a frustrating miss right there because that was absolutely huge. Even so, on this next one, this was um, this one was I can't even remember what when this was. Was this in the second half? Well, this is no, it's fourth quarter. Yeah, this was right before. Oh, geez. But if, but boy, if you just for a second here look at this play and dissect this, oh man, did we give one up? Because if, if when you when you see him break, okay. At this point, he's making the break. Now, he's probably thrown. Uh, anyway, if he throws the ball out in front of him, leads him, even in the littlest bit, that's a completion. But instead, he throws it back over to this side, which gives the DB a chance to close. 
But even when he closes, he misses the ball. He completely misses the ball. If he goes up with both hands, he's got a chance to reel it in. He's not going. He's going to fall right where he catches it. But this guy completely misses the ball. If this ball is aired out over here, there's no way he closes the gap. That's a completion. And it, and again, just another one that we gave up. But you know, he tries to one hand this. I don't know what he was thinking, but or if his body was just going, he felt like he couldn't go up with both hands. I don't know, but it looks like he anyway. went with both hands. I don't know. Listen, I mean, yeah, that's a tough should, one. I mean, yeah, it's, we probably should. We probably should spend. Um, we probably should stop crying over spilt milk because, unfortunately for him, I no. I mean, I feel bad for Tyler Buckner. You know, like I do. Yeah, he was. He was. He was gonna. Um, you know, whatever. We were gonna learn a lot about him this year. We were either gonna figure out whether he was a a guy that could win football games for Notre Dame as a starting quarterback. Obviously, you know, Saturday was disappointing, and you know, who's to say what would have happened? Uh, you know, if he wouldn't have uh, if he wouldn't have hurt himself. Um, uh, unlikely that Notre Dame would have pulled it out, but um, I wish he could have finished the game and, and been healthy and have an opportunity to redeem himself in the coming weeks. But, you know, now we got to turn our attention to, you know, how the hell are we going to beat uh, Cal? I mean, because the, 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 the stuff that we throw up, threw out there this past Saturday is, is, is not going to beat, um, is not going to beat Cal. <laughs> it's yeah. just not, I mean, they're not very good, but it, it's just, it's, you know, we, if we, if we can't uh, play with a little bit more, um, you know, um, emotion and play with a little bit more fight. Um, it's going to be pretty hard to. It's going to be pretty hard to win Saturday, and and they have got to win the football game Saturday. You know, they they in order to send their season into a direction of of hope. Yeah, and it, it's an, and this is an this is an absolute they must win. win. They got to figure out but, a way to win. They got to do it for their coach, who's 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 questioning everything he does right now. Who's yep. wondering? You know, you talk about Tommy being over his head. I'm sure Marcus is walking around right. Now. I mean, you can't help but have doubt when things are going badly. Yeah, what, did, what have I been doing wrong? Going. Yeah, exactly. Well, not only that, but coffee, it doesn't get any easier for him going up against BYU. I mean, that's a team full of fifth-year seniors, mm -hmm. and the regular guys are already in their 20s anyway because they, <laughs> they do that mission yeah. overseeing themselves. So, yeah, no, I no, mean, no, you're, no, you're talking about a really veteran team that we are going to have our hands full, and, and you lose Saturday – I don't know, man. That I just don't see how you. Lose Saturday, that. we could be looking at an 0 5 start minimum. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not real thrilled about having to go to North Carolina either. There, that kid Moya, he can really, he can score points. And yeah. we were talking about earlier about our front seven really needing to live up to their uh, billing. They they really really need to are going to have to show up against that guy because if they can't get some pressure, if they can't force some mistakes. North Carolina might hang 35 or 42. Yeah. On us. We're, we're but, really going to have to get the job done. Go ahead and give the prediction. What do you think is going to happen come Saturday? Oh, dear. Um, honestly, I think I picked us. I think I said 31-21 uh, loss. Did you really? Uh, I, I, I don't see the – and this is before Buckner got hurt. I mean, I I, I just no. don't see it. I mean, I don't know if it, the things that are wrong with this program, I don't know if it's something you can turn around in just a week of game preparation. They may need the bye week just to really go in and just start, as, as I said, just start hammering the fundamentals, just really start. But can you do that while you're trying to prepare for an opponent on Saturday? It's Yeah. Do you, do you think they'll lean one way or the other, Ed? I mean, what – the game plan you think they're just going to run the football 25 out of 30 times or maybe what do you what do you think is going to happen saturday yeah no i think it'll be a fairly sort of you know i i, I think that it'll be a pretty vanilla game plan and uh you know they're gonna they're gonna go back you know to these guys this week and challenge them right challenge them to because physically you know regardless of scheme um I mean, not regardless of scheme, but I mean, scheme should not win a game against Marshall or against Cal, right? Just the mm -hmm. overall physical, uh, physicality and talent um, should win. I mean, if you have a, a base scheme that you execute well, you know, that's why I've always sort of thought that the emphasis on, on play calling is often misplaced. Um, yeah, it's really important when teams are sort of physically compatible or physically even. But when they're not, when there's kind of a decided advantage for one team or the other, which Notre Dame will have, okay? I mean, 
you know, uh, that's that's why Texas A&M losing to Appalachian State is 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 comedy. I mean, it's you know, in in terms of this, it's that's you know, you got out coached and you got out, you know, you just got out, you got whipped. Um, yeah. So, yep. but but there's a reason for that, and um, you know, I don't know. Now, you know, Cal will Cal will be smart, right? They will try and make they will try and make um, make Drew Pine uh, beat them. Uh, oh yeah. Which, yeah. Which is what you should do, right? Well, they're gonna they're gonna load the box. I promise you that they're gonna sure. load the box. And but you know, I think this is one of those moments where Freeman is just gonna have to say, guys, man, you're gonna roll your sleeves up and you're gonna prove something. And even if they load the box, we are gonna run the football and we're gonna move it. Now, well, in, in, I'm, I'm in not a scenario in, in a scenario like that, maybe something like a screen pass is gonna be. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, screen pass. We haven't seen one the whole counter. season. Counter. There's. Yeah, haven't seen a screen the whole season. Where's the misdirection? <laughs> misdirection is what this team needs, and we see yeah. none of it. Everything is just running right at the obvious gap or throwing right to the yeah. obvious guy who's been locked. I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, the thing is, we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, but maybe they're struggling and they can't even introduce that stuff because they can't get this stuff right. I don't. I mean, who knows what's who knows what's going on? I mean, I I do think this will be a big moment for the season. This game is going to be a very big moment. They're going to need to get the win. Um, I, I kind of think they are. I, I have a gut feeling that they are going to turn things around here this week. I think Freeman's the kind of guy that'll focus. He'll he'll buckle down and focus on a few things. They'll show success in that, and and I think he's going to challenge the right kind of leaders. I, and I hate to bring this up, but when I was watching the game and I saw on the sidelines Foskey chewing everybody out on the sidelines, I'm thinking, man, how well is that going over when you haven't had one of your better games? <laughs> and it's twice in a row, you know? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, I think he had one tackle. Did he have one tackle the whole game? He had a sack. I think he had a sack. He had a sack, but I, I, that was the only thing I remember. I, I just don't remember. Yeah. Anyways, um, th those guys have got to step up. Whoever the leaders are, they have got to step up and carry the load and and get everybody else confident because that's the only way they're going to turn this thing around and hopefully that happens saturday because if it doesn't this could be a real long well even in even in the history of this podcast we may be in uncharted waters from, from what we've done and Ed, what's your quick pick you didn't give a score what do you think oh sorry um yeah no i i, I do think this is still a pretty pretty talented football team um that that will that will play hard for this, you know, the staff. Um, and, um, you know, I, so, but, but they're going to, they're still going to, you know, I think they're still going to struggle to score some points. Um, so, you know, I'll say that they're going to win, but it's going to be like, you know, I'm going to say 20 to 16. Okay. Yeah. I kind of think 31, 20 is what I'm, I'm thinking us winning, but um, in any event, well, it's going to be interesting. I'm there for the game. So this will be my one, one game that I see in person. So, in any event, let's. Talk, I'm, I'm undefeated, by the way, coming. But since I moved to Florida, every game I've ever come back for, we've won. So, hopefully, that still holds the case. <laughs> is that is that because um, you've come to uh, unranked opponents? Well, I always come early in September because I can't stand the cold.